Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Yes, I am that guy, Keith Anthony Blanchard, your host of Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement. Strap in all ye spiritual astral knots as we launch for inner space. Make sure, welcome to the show, make sure that you check out the Center of Light Radio website. You can do that by going to centeroflightradio.com. It's ready for you. Lots of really cool stuff there. You can find all my books, my bestseller, The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on, Zer- Heaven on Earth, my children's book series, Eden Sky Wonders Why, modeled after my beautiful little 10-year-old boy named Eden Sky. Also, my latest release, For the Love of God, A Spiritual Journey. Uh, this book is about my journey to India to experience the magic, the power, and the divinity of a holy man that came to me in a dream. <laughs> yes, he came to me in a dream inviting me. Two weeks later, I get a phone call from a lady I never met that said, Keith, I hear you want to go to India. And I said, yes, Debbie, this is true. She says, well, Keith, I'm a flight attendant. I got some companion passes for the year that are about to expire, and I would not like that to happen, knowing you want to go to India to see a holy man. Can I give you a first-class round-trip ticket? So across the pond I go. <laughs> uh, and to log this entire experience into a tape recorder. 15 years later, I sit here in front of this microphone and tell you that this book, For the Love of God, A Spiritual Journey, has just been released. So make sure you check that out. Also, uh, at, at the Center of Light Radio, you can uh, find your way to my other website, Do What You Love, the movie, Do What You Love, A Path to Passionate Living. It's a spiritual documentary about my life. Well, it's really about you. Um, how to empower you with the tools that you need to become uh, successful, all by just living your passion. I think Robert and I probably, my guest tonight, Mr. Robert Tennyson Stevens, um, we'll talk a little bit about passion. Gosh, <laughs> we're going to talk about a lot of things. And finally, also, you can check out my Do What You Love Forever course. Uh, the Center of Light Radio website will take you wherever you need to go. To call into the show live and to speak to myself, or, or Mr. Robert Tennyson Stevens and ask a question or just say hi. We're friendly here at Center of Light Radio. You dial 888 919 2355. Remember, if you're not at home or by your computer and you want to hear your fave show, you can go to your app store on your phone and download the Inception Radio Network app for, here's the big word, free. Everything is easy accessible. There's chat room, listen, live link, news, podcasts much more very very cool uh there are many ways to connect to inception radio network now it's time to get down to center of light radio business let me tell you a little bit about my guest i think you get to meet the man (laughs) uh today's an overview of today we're going to be talking about awakening to your own heart-based operating system Uh, discover how your language body signals and life situations or a specific call for exacting changes and upgrades find simple and successful techniques to reverse your current limitations into your heart's fulfilled desires with ease (laughs) wow do what you love as i said uh let me give you the rundown excuse me on my powerful guest today Robert Tennyson Stevens, develop, developer and CEO of Mastery Systems International, is a leader in the influence of language, imagination, facilitation techniques, body language, and consciously birthing and enjoying our dreams now. He is the creator and facilitator of a dynamic curriculum of personal and professional empowerment technologies, trainings, and support materials. In providing personal and corporate coaching and facilitation for, you ready for this, 40 plus years, he's a young man, (laughs) Robert has developed systems for attaining heartfelt outcomes quickly, heartfelt outcomes quickly, and gives his students exacting tools to replicate his successes and beyond in sustaining paradigm shifts in health business, communication, and attaining heartfelt outcomes. Robert is the founder of Conscious Language, 
sacred body language translations, imagination, activation. Love that. Transforming emotion into motion. Bio optic. Allegraphy. Life upgrading upgrade coaching. Robert is currently inviting those who are shaping our new earth to become life upgrade coaches through extensive virtual and live trainings. You can visit www.masterysystems.com for further information. Mr. Stevens, welcome to the Center of Light Radio. Oh, thank you very much, Keith. And by the way, thank you for being willing to read all that. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> what a bio. Uh, you've done the work. And you not only talk the talk, <laughs> no pun intended, but pun intended. You walk the walk in a very, very big way. And you're playing in some fields that uh, I'm moving towards myself. So, again, welcome to the show. And last time you and I had a conversation, it was very powerful, very enlightening, and just awesome in every possible way. So, again, welcome to the show. Thank you. Let me ask you this. What does, what does Robert Tennyson Stevens' day look like when you start your day? What do you do when you start your day? That's a, you know, that's fascinating you would ask me that question. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm sitting really, and plus I scratch my throat, which is where I make choice in communication. So there's a little body language confirmation there. So I am in the middle of designing, and we do major uh, maestro conference calls and stuff like that. And um, we have... Uh, let's just say I've been doing this a long time, so there's a number of people involved and new folks coming on. And the the very first thought, I invite myself first, obviously, and then my world to go, let's, you know, like they say, well, drink, you know, pure water the first thing when you get up. Also have pure thought, and then cr let's create our day. So the first thing when I'm on, when I'm doing my, uh, when I'm disciplined, in my spiritual path, I create my day, which means you should get up, sit up in a, in a quiet, my quiet room. I'm, I live in a log home with myself, me, myself, and I. And I will start my day with decrees, imagination, and instead of what's the worst case scenario, I am now focused on what's the best case scenario or what's my, what's my miracle scenario. I mean, literally, this just went out in a brand new uh, – today, just in fact about an hour ago, I just sent out a brand new um, uh, newsletter to about 6,000 people, and that's the, my, my conversation from the new Avengers movie. You know, in the beginning, Tony Stark goes, you know, instead of the worst case scenario, how about the best case scenario? And I, I literally went back just to catch that sound bite again and then left for this. My second viewing was just the first whatever, you know, hour, 45 minutes because I chose to hear that again. What's our best case scenario? That's really the shift of the ages right there. That seems somewhat rhetorical, right? Because you're not expecting an answer. You're just open to the best case scenario. Or is there some imagery that you apply to that? But I think oh, what oh, the imagery. I, yes. I, well, I'm jumping in. What answer the question? That's always that's the miracle. Ask yourself a question and then answer it. For me, that my magic comes when when I uh, discovered how to ask a question that elicits a healing response or that completely shifts where we are in consciousness. So answering the question is the bottom line. That's what makes success happen. Uh, so, and so I would assume that you speak this out loud because of the power of the, add more ump to the thoughts or what you're trying to create for your day. Yes. This is not something you're no, just thinking. You I, actually I, verbalize just keep it, I, I don't speak it out loud. And I mean, some of my decrees I do. But normally I'm just contemplating, you know, the whole bottom, for me, you know, this is my focus, right? The whole, my whole bottom line is consciousness is senior to everything else. So <laughs> my old self, scripturally, not religion, it talks about the old self has to die as the new self is born. Well, our old reality believed in, the word believe means to be alive in, must die, so to speak, or dissolve into our new reality. So, you know, let's wake up to, well, now that we're thriving, well, now that we're happy, now that we're healed, um, now that we're with our beloved, now that we're abundantly supplied, and then answer the question, what are we doing? Not how did we get somewhere? It's now that we have our miracle, what's new and different, and turn the lights on in the mansion of our new consciousness. 
remember from our last conversation, you had said something to the effect of, no, you said, um, love, move towards love, you move towards consciousness, you move away from it. You, you become uh, less conscious. And some of those things that you uh, shared with me last time you and I had a conversation, were re they really stuck with me. Fear touched by love turns into faith. Yes. These, these are very, very, for me, very, very simple, powerful ideas that, um, you know, last conversation, you, you've checked me, uh, called me out on a few things in my my talking to you, certain things that I be, was unaware of how I use my language. And this is the field that you are truly master uh, in. Um, what is, let's see, let me get my notes here. I wanted to ask you right off the bat, what is um, the, the heart-based uh, program that you are doing now? What I have, obviously, I have a whole bunch of them, you know, so I have an imagination activation, I have sacred body language translate, all of these fit together in ways for individuals to wake up their own self-coaching. So I have about 7,000, uh, I've worked with about 7,000 chiropractors, and, and my standing story on that is when a chiropractor is walking down the street and they, they kind of adjust their back and I hear the noise and I go, well, what do you charge for an adjustment? They go, $65, <laughs> I'll say, well, take $65 out of your left pocket and put it in your right pocket because you just adjusted yourself. Well, what I realize is every one of us is a master in training, and we might as well gain the skills to be able to turn any limitation into what it's meant to be. The scriptural, again, not religion. I'm not talking about religion when I talk about this. I'm talking about laws, or potential laws anyway. And, and what one of the scriptures I love is, your greatest weakness shall be your greatest strength. So what I'm in the middle of now is bringing all these codes of consciousness that I've got. I have 29 provisional patents, international patents pending, right, um, that I, somebody helped me do way back, that I realized, oh, they're, they're, it's, it's like software, only if this is humanware. And so I am in the middle of sharing a human upgrade or, or a, an upgrade to our human operating system. I call it a conscious human operating system. So. In that, we have life upgrade coaching, which I'm now, we're training trainers, and it's, you know, we've done about 80, 80 trainers so far, and they're out coaching. And I just, I figured it out in about two seconds, we can find somebody's glitch, or less even. I mean, really, truly, in nanoseconds, the individual, the glitch will be revealed in the code. We can understand the code, reflect that to the person, and then help them shift their pattern into what's really asking for manifestation, again, like, you know, fear, when it touches love, turns into faith. So if anybody's running around in the world, simply put, if they're, if they're battling lack, they don't know their value, and they're picking goals too small for their great self, for their God self. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, how cool is that to just, you know, somebody goes, oh, I can't afford it, I'm stressed about money. Well, then, you, you, first of all, number one, it's never about money, it's always about value. And number two is you're picking goals to survive and get by and settle and make do, pick bigger goals. So you have to have a miracle so you <laughs> let your great self fund you. So, you know, this is, I have so much fun with this because I see everything as a movement of energy. And, you know, if it's true that our greatest weakness shall be, not kind of, not maybe, not if, not when, shall be our greatest strength, let's get to it. So what is the process that one goes through that you would put someone through to help them find their absolute potential first thing i i, I love preparing the soil you know just I, if we're going to weed our garden it's great but if we you know if we <laughs> i went away one time i had a beautiful garden i went away three months on tour <laughs> and i have roses and everything right and it's just me my wife had already passed and I came back, and I didn't even know it was gardening. Things were growing up. Weeds were growing up so big that I could barely get in my house. So uh, it, what I realized is preparing the garden is essential. So not only pulling out the weeds, planting what we choose that's going to be self-perpetuating. So for me, what I do is the, the, if we're going to prepare the soil and get the nutrients right and the pH right and all, of, all the wonderful things, so to speak, in the metaphor of our soil, I train people and I prepare them for moving up scale. 
So when, in my system, I make sure that people understand this thing called conscious languaging. Not how to say it right, that's just not going to work. Just when I really teach language, I don't really teach conscious language. What I really share with them is what conscious language isn't because the mm. language of our heart is already, we're operating on it. So if, if we will move out of our head, so to speak, and just speak from our heart without any edit whatsoever, our heart will always speak purely. So the, when people become aware that every word is a thing and, you know, the decree a thing and it shall be established unto you and by your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned and life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's all fact for me. And so I start with conscious language and then I begin to wake people up to the shift of the old reality, the limited self, genetic and experiential, is going to come back for upgrades. If we feel that some, you know, like if I make a mistake or I have shame or blame or guilt or lack or anger, fear, any of that stuff, if I feel that those states, my states, are wrong and I try to do something that's more right, I will stay in duality and fail because, you know, I'm being attempted to be more right while avoiding where I am wrong or bad or evil or whatever. So I let the, my the next step from languaging, conscious language is whatever comes up, let it be okay. And this is the all for you training. And the, it's, the name of our certification is all for you helping others life upgrade coaching certification because if I can feel fear and just let my fear be okay without any thought whatsoever of having to change my fear because it's wrong, just love it. My love will touch my fear. And as you mentioned, it will literally, by, love by itself, without any effort on my part, love alone is our source code. And when I touch, let's say, shame or blame or lack or a mistake, if I can just say it's okay, and I love my mistake, and what I say is come and sit at my table. Of course, my table is the size of the universe because I've made a lot of errors. And I say, just come and sit at my table. I'm serious. Uh, just come and sit at my table. I love you just the way you are, meaning I'm not trying to love you into the right way or right state. And when I can just love for the sake of loving, again, Keith, this is a big piece, so I appreciate being on with you because I know you can – a center of light radio. Hello. So, um, <laughs> so – I believe that in the metaphor, not religion, so please, you know, I use scripture and some people are ah, say, no, 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 that I don't do it that way, and maybe all of us ought to upgrade and just find the truth and whatever. So we supposedly in the metaphor ate from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge, which means thinking of good and evil as eternal beings of light, so we're all still eternal. Yet we entered the hollow deck, so to speak, of thinking about good and evil, instantly fell from union, which is grace, and became embarrassed, interesting, and have, have had to try to figly figure out what to do to cover <laughs> ourselves. But, you know, hiding our embarrassment and trying to get back to some outside union or God or approval, and it doesn't work. So only our love. Perfect love casteth out all fear. I believe perfect love envelops everything and turns it into love because everything is built by light. And even if it's a, a anger or fear, or grief or disease or whatever, it's still light shaped or qualified. Only love is going to restore it. So for me, the next step after languaging is whatever begins to come back, love it and let it, and don't even try to fix it. Love it just the way it is. That Those two steps have. You know, I mean, again, I've been doing this for over four decades. Mm. It's a thousand times easier, if I can put a number to it, a thousand <laughs> times easier to have somebody walk up scale now that I realize the right-wrong piece was deeper. It was, it was the structure of our illusion. When you have conversation with someone about your system and they begin to share what, what's going on with them, and as you... I got to find the right word here, Robert. Uh, as you listen, <laughs> that's a good safe word. As you begin to listen, do you find that there's a parallel or have you noticed, which I'm sure you have, um, between what they are speaking and diseases in the body? 100%. Are you, are you efficient 100%. enough at it to, to where 100%. you can actually 
basically they tell you their life story and what's going on. You can possibly assume to use a word Not possibly. Or, or, or guess Not possibly guarantee 100%. Uh, you know, the word becomes flesh. Let's just put it that way. The word, that's how I've got sacred body language translation. I got a book. I have this thing called Four Forces of Health. But it's, I mean, literally, if it's, you know, my job is to not agree with that person saying that, and then they're going to get this disease. My job is to vote victory, and that's what I train all my, all my students and teachers is see perfection, vote victory. And, I mean, uh, somebody said, well, I can't, I can't, I can't. They're going to have lymphatic challenges. I don't want to see that. That's eye stuff. I hate hearing stuff. that. They're going to be ear stuff. Anger, suppressed anger is, you know, joint stuff, bone stuff, mm. metabolism stuff. But it goes, you know, I'm a, I do the, by that bio-optic holography, which you did a great job, by the way, and that word. Most people go, that bio-optic thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's basically iridology, but on a whole more cosmic level. And the eyes change. When we get the right reversal, you know, the word burst means, you know, speaking. And when we reverse something, it means we re-say it. When we revise it by eyes or vision, we re-see it. When we, re- when we renounce it, we're renaming it. So literally, I believe, you know, if it's true that our greatest weakness should be our greatest strength, then, and if it's true that our word becomes flesh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so, you know, when I listen to people now, that's why I prefer, I'm very careful because um, if I don't have permission to coach someone, my job is to just be a committed listening for their victory. There's a, there's a word that I love, which is the word secure, instead of, you know, I'm safe. Would you rather be safe or secure? And most everyone realizes when they're safe, they're always safe from something. That's for now. <laughs> yeah. But yet secure includes safe. It's kind of like white light includes all the colors. But red doesn't include all the colors or white. Mm. And so with the word secure includes, it's a great, I'm secure. Well, what I found phonetically, I mean, I believe our, our cosmic consciousness it has, is a humorist. I mean, that's all there is to it. And I empower my world. I bring to the point of I see cure everywhere I go. And Fantastic. then when I see the cure, I am secure because I'm broadcasting C cure. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's cosmic. I mean, for me personally, cosmic. So every, everything is so interconnected. There is no separation as above, so below on every possible level as below, so above. One of the first books I read on my conscious path was Louise Hay. Uh, his book, uh, You Can Heal Your Life. And yep. in it, she tells of how the different body conditions, body diseases uh, relate to mindset and all this stuff. And <clears throat> it brings me to a movie I saw some years ago. And the movie was with Jamie Foxx. The movie was Ray, the story of Ray Charles' life. When Ray Charles was a young boy, five years old, I'm just picking a number somewhere around there, he saw his brother fall into a 10-gallon, whatever, galvanized tub. He was standing in a tub, and his brother fell over and fell in the tub and drowned. He saw this. A year later, he went blind. Yeah. Basically, this world, I don't want to see. This is yep. just too much he, for me to see. Yep. He's, he, and, you know, if you could, I mean, I've worked if, literally, literally tens and tens and tens of thousands of people. So, I mean, it's so a fact now that you know, let's be conscious with our words. Let's speak. My, my rule of thumb is let's speak only what we choose to have come into manifestation. And I'm visual. I'm a highly visual, you know, in the visual auditory kinesthetic. I'm like almost all visual, a little bit of auditory or a little bit of kinesthetic. And when somebody, this is in the past, I mean, I've improved tremendously, hopefully. I mean, yes. Um, <laughs> when somebody would talk to me, I'd go into a trance. And it was just, you know, it's like it put me outside of my box. Well, now I'm obviously better. I mean, I'm better at it, I, I affirm. And the, it, well, for me, I build a picture with every word that somebody's saying to me or I'm saying. So I see it in pictures. So if somebody says, it blew my mind when I'm going, maybe not a good idea to blow your mind. I don't think so. Or that just kills me. Or, you know, now these common phrases we use, um, they may not be life-giving. 
Robert, when I, I play music out all the time, so I'm always networking, meeting people. I have no <laughs> problem whatsoever. Uh, if you're digging the band and I see that I have your attention, I'll, I'll just pull up a chair and sit at your table and dig out of your French fry basket. I have no issue with that whatsoever. And I get to meet some of the most amazing, be beautiful people from all walks of life <clears throat> doing all kinds of wonderful things. One thing that I do, and you said something about uh, going into a trance, and it brought this up to, to my attention to mention it to you, is when I meet someone, let's say I meet John Doe, and John Doe has a really cool speaking voice. I begin to admire it. Or I meet Jill Doe, and she's physically beautiful. I begin to admire it. So I find a quality in a person that I am connecting with, and I begin to massage it, and I begin to salivate over it, and I really take it in with me to a place of God or highest conscience, whatever person chooses to call it. And I begin to appreciate that particular quality in that person. And I guess uh, in order for me to have the experience, I would go into a trance or some sort of meditation or some sort of conscious shift. Because as I do this for a while with this person, I literally see God in them step to the fore and I see changes happening <laughs> immediately, be it in their eyes, be it in the, the smile on their face gets bigger, um, just a touch a look, a gesture, a word. I really go into my heart space and I see some of the most profound effects happen right before my eyes. I see cure. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, scripturally, it says what you put <laughs> yes. your, what, what, scripturally it says, what you put your attention upon, that ye become. So... You know, for me, I call that seeing perfection. It's one of the forefronts of the work that I'm involved in is to, I read eyes. You know, I do this thing of lo looking in eyes, and I share, especially with somebody who's going to become a facilitator of it. I say, you know, when you look at, when you, when you, you can either look for something or you can see something. So when you're seeing perfection, the eye, anyone's eye will speak to us, and the fibers and the color change the minute we ask questions to the person that, you know, while, you know, in other words, not what's wrong with you, but for me, it's like, let's say kidneys. Kidneys are partnership and forgiveness. So I might say, do you have a left eye would be feminine side, female figure. It doesn't have to be a woman, but I would say something like, do you have a, a, an issue, some challenge going on with the requirement to be forgiven by or to forgive a female figure, or do you have something going on relative to partnership with a female? And, you know, once they get it, maybe they bring forgiveness into an old, something about relationship and partnership. That fiber, that kidney will change. And when I first saw the eyes change way back when I was 21 years old, and I was told by all my teachers in iridology that the eyes don't change, and I saw what's called a radio solaris or radial spoke go from black, which means genetic uh, suppression of a particular pattern is spoke, into completely, a, the individual young man had blue eyes, went to white-blue fibers. By ass, He was dyslexic, and uh, I, I, it, the area of the brain was right eye, left brain, and it was a acquired mental speech where a dyslexic pattern would show up. I said, do you ever have a difficult time putting your own thoughts into words verbally? He says, yeah, I'm dyslexic. And at that point, I was dyslexic, and I asked, being a dyslexic, how to, how to spell dyslexia to a dyslexic. <laughs> and he couldn't do it, and he got emotional, and I had him feel the memory, and he remembered when his dad was ca calling him stupid, and he went through uh -huh. the memory, and he forgave his dad, and looked back in his eye, and that black radial spoke was now gone, and pure blue fibers were there, and I saw a miracle. What, what I now realize, even then I knew something cosmic just happened, I realized that 100% of all creation, all creation, are believed in thought, word, and emotional patterns, and we can shift our belief or what we be alive in into something new. And so for me, my whole system is, like you working with people and seeing them in a brand new way, I'm sharing systems that I have. I call them codes of consciousness where an individual can help themselves and then find a way to help others because I believe that the mentoring and helping each other is the way we're going to wake up heaven on earth very very i mean in the twinkling of an eye like a thief in the night 
Robert, we at the um, bottom of the hour. Would you give out your contact information, sir, about your phenomenal, powerful system? MasterySystems.com is our website. That's probably the best contact. Uh, and we just sent out a brand new newsletter today. It's pretty. I haven't done one in a while because we've, we've created an online virtual university type model to become certified on a whole bunch of different things, and that's all available now. So Mastery Systems with an S on the end. Dot com and definitely sign up for the newsletter besides you know check out what's going on in there because the, we're doing some amazing things and we're dynamically and powerfully and effectively in the middle of empowering individuals to be leaders in their own communities with these tools. Listen, you audience, we, uh, this is Center of Light Radio. I'm your host, Keith Anthony Blanchett, my amazing guest tonight, powerful guest. I really enjoy talking to this gentleman. Uh, if you want to call into the show, dial 888 888- Nine one nine two three five five. Any questions you might have, uh, bring them to the table, and I'm sure we can see our way through that and make you a blissful person. Hey, but let's, uh, Robert. I got a couple of questions for you. Um, what do doctors think about what you do? Well, it depends on the type of doctor. I've trained uh, again many, many, many chiropractors. They love what I'm talking about. In fact, one of our uh, in the next decade. I've been here a while, and the next decade is going to be bringing um, my particular systems redesigned and packaged very specific into the, I'm going to say full health care, because I've had a few medical people do it, some psychiatrists, a lot of psychologists, a lot of body workers, a lot of chiropractors, some osteopaths be involved. And most people, you know, from just the languaging or even if they don't use the tool with their people, just to be able to read what's going on through languaging, symptom, or what I call the sacred body language translation, we can know in a heartbeat what's really up for somebody, no matter what the modality. So for me, the dogma of where I have been in the past many years ago, the dogma that I experienced was, oh, this is wrong, and you have to do only this. Well, now I'm realizing God works through everything. You know, light works through everything. As belief is the bottom line, not the substance. So, the the let's say the healthcare professional and whatever they are, doctor, nurse, educator, whatever. The word doctor means educator. So, what I bring to the table for those who are willing to explore is an upgrade to what they're already using. It doesn't. My system does not require people to change their modality. It just advances it. It it feels like an app (laughs) on our iPhone and to expand what we're doing. So that's my focus right now because, you know, we require our medical model. We require our, all the different ways they work. And some are a little less effective than others. I mean, there are many people being healed from all kinds of stuff using every possible approach And I believe bottom line is, and I believe anybody even in the medical model would say this, the patient, their consciousness is what makes all the difference in the world. It's not the the drug therapy, if that's it, or the cancer therapy or the surgery or anything else. It's the consciousness, the individual. That's what I'm working with right now. So, you know, it's a, what a beautiful way for somebody who is willing to truly bless their patients and clients and their those that they're responsible for and stewarding to help. I mean, for me, the, I've, worked, I've worked with a number of medical doctors who finally just went, God, I hate this because people <laughs> come to me with all their problems and they don't really take responsibility. And so our, it seemed like our unconscious agreement is I have to give them a drug or something and, you know, they're just not having fun. I, I, I literally know thousands of chiropractors that have redesigned their world now to only work two and a half days a week because adjusting people without helping people get in touch with the cause and adjusting the cause by getting somebody to help them with their symptom without adjusting the cause is karmically out of balance. So the, the individuals who are actually going, hey, you know, your back is your support system and your shoulders are blessings and burdens in conflict with each other and your tailbone is the rudder of your ship and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so when people, when, no matter how, even if they adjust, great, but also adjust them in consciousness so the individual doesn't come back three times a week for 30 years because they didn't adjust the cause. I mean, if we just adjust the symptom, we're missing the point. 
Here's a strange question. Uh, were you a fan of George Carlin? Yeah. Uh, I, he's been do, you know why on, I'm at, uh, do you know why I'm asking you the question? Uh, no, I don't, but not yet anyway. Go ahead. Because he was a wordsmith. I mean, he. Uh, did you learn, Robert, did you learn or is this, did you invent, um, for example, with the word secure, C-cure? Is this something you put together? It's brilliant. Yeah. Yes, it's, but I, it's yeah, I mean, I right. believe I'm sponsored. I mean, I believe all of us have spiritual sponsorship. So my little self, eh, not so, not so, um, the way I say it is this, Keith, if I screwed up, that's my little self. If I did a great job, that's my God self, and there's no in between. So anything is wonderful. I believe my great God self gave it to me. So for me, being visual, when I would say the word secure, I just got this within the last year and a half. Well, you know, I'm, I work a lot with the prosperity model, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I choose to be safe, again, safe from something. I choose to be secure. I am secure. And then I saw the word secure. So <laughs> others may have it. I, I didn't learn that from anyone. But go ahead about George Carlin. We used to, I used to have eight record stores and a record distributorship with some friends back in the early 70s. And we would put on shows with rock and roll groups. And Carlin was one of our shows. And I love that guy. I mean, he was just a brilliant soul. He, he was real big on words and what they really mean and the power of them. Um, looking at some of my notes I made, um, last time I spoke with you, one thing that re resounded within me and still does is uh, you said something to the effect of anything less than the highest choice contains self-sabotage that is so powerful and so to the point for me that when i catch myself doing those things or thinking such thoughts uh, th that phrase pops into my mind immediately yeah well that's the <laughs> me too <laughs> i mean you know i i share with my coaches you know I, they learn a really profound system of coaching in a very short period of time meaning you know they, they're very dangerous to the illusion is what i say and i say here's the trick though you're really not coaching anyone else because there's only one of us here scripture again if you're not one you're not mine so if you know this is i believe our god self talking to all of us through whatever mechanism and if it's scripture it's scripture and so i share with people that it, what you're doing when you're coaching someone is you're coaching yourself and your experience of that perception of that person. So, you know, I'm, you know, when I'm teaching, when I'm talking right now, I'm giving it to myself. I'm just, you know, I'm not really talking to a separate self called you. I'm speaking out loud into myself until I get it. And so I'm using all this stuff. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, if there's a, you know, why, what in us would settle? It's definitely not our, our glorious white fire being self. It is that which has maybe through eons of time, through however it all works. It's that which has talked ourselves out of being already what we desire to be. The illusion, this is the way I say it, is if, if we could all just imagine an illusion in the corner that we've been feeding. An illusion has no life force of its own. It needs somebody to feed it or believe in it, which means be alive in it, to keep it alive. So if I have a limitation, a lack, a struggle, a fear, whatever it is, and it's, it's a repeating pattern, in other words, it's been with me a long time, that's because I've been feeding it. If I would simply take my attention off the problem, so to speak, and put my attention on the solution, my problem would die from lack of attention. You, you can water the weed or you can water the plant. Either way, it'll grow. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the words that we used uh, last time you and I spoke, I was talking about uh, how when you begin to live your passion, that thing which brings you bliss and joy, that you become a conduit. And you immediately chimed in and said, you conduit. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh the tongue you mentioned something about the tongue being developed out of the heart muscle yeah and the power uh, the the parallel to that is just just it wows me well and you know i might share this stuff Keith, but it's still cosmic for me i mean you know i'm going and my my daughter uh who my oldest daughter Mignon, who does you know, she's an amazing artist. She drew the Universal Man 
Um, and then she, I had her create a version of it where there's a heart, you know, true anatomically accurate heart, and and where and the tongue. And she actually drew that. It's on one of our logos that we have for our material, Universal Man, and with you know the big beautiful drawn in heart and the you know the the expression from our heart. Somebody just sent me something about the you know there's different you know we can speak from our head and we can speak from our heart where there's totally different nerve uh, conduit. One from our head and one from our heart. So, I mean, how it's just amazing to me, you know, to eat from the fruit of the tree metaphor of the knowledge. Obviously, that means the thinking of right and wrong equals we fall from grace, which is union or already done, and become embarrassed, embarrassed. That word didn't exist in union and have to big leaf, figure out, big leaf what to do to cover ourselves in our wrongness or our badness or our evilness and try to figure out being covered with what, you know, our separate self, how to get back to being good, which is still duality to bad or wrong. So when love, only love is going to do this thing, only, uh, I'm not even going to say unconditional love because it means without condition, which is without, which is babble. It's going to take all of our love. It's going to take divine love. It's going to take agape. It's going to take, you know, the the love that accepts something just the way it is without needing to change it at all. And if if anyone has ever had someone in their life who loved them for who they are without any, like, need to change them, praise God. I mean, praise life. Again, I'm the same way. Whatever name people give that thing, love is life-giving. Love is our source code. Living where I live, Memphis, Tennessee, the consciousness, the belief system that's here. Um, people often talk about, you know, there's a war in heaven. <laughs> like these beings of light are having physical battle or some sort of battle. And I, 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 it's hard for me to grasp that. Now, I don't buy into it whatsoever because if you take a, a pen flashlight and you bring it into a dark room, it just spells the darkness and again uh your words fear touched by love turns into faith it's the same idea it's 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 illuminating that which is just dark or um ignorant well it's an interesting word ignorant is to ignore (laughs) it's like okay (laughs) i mean the only way i can see a shadow is to look away from the light if I see my own shadow, obviously I'm looking completely away from the light. And if I see your shadow, you know, oh, you've got an ego. If I see that, I'm not looking at light. So if I see cure, not curing everywhere I go, if I see cure everywhere I go, man, oh man. I mean, just, if I, I have this thing where I invite people to vote victory in the words of something like, I mean, I haven't picked whatever their words are. Mine are, I am my permanent victory in the light. and silently, everywhere somebody goes, everywhere I go, I am your permanent victory in the light. And I have done this myself, and I invite people to go sit on a street corner or find a, you know, somewhere where you can just sit and, without anyone knowing it, vote everyone's victory you see. But vote it not like, I hope you wake up to your victory. No, it's I am, which means already done. I am your permanent victory in the light. That's not an invitation. It's not a request. It's a fact. So if somebody will do that for an hour or a day, depending on <laughs> how happy they're willing to be, literally every cell in our body, it, it has been said, I, I mean, this is something I believe is true, that we keep 60% of everything we send out in the appearance of radiating it out because it has to go through our body. So if I'm hating someone's hate, I keep 60% of that hate. And if, if there is this thing called the tithe, I'm not talking about giving money at church. I'm talking about the way the universe works. If, like if I, Keith, give a, a gift through me for my great God self or universal supply through you to your world, to your God, that's called, in Deuteronomy, that's called a tenfold return. If I give something not from me, because I, I don't have enough juice, but if I give it through me, through you, to help others, in Deuteronomy says that's a hundredfold return. Mm. Now, and then it goes up to a thousandfold return. I believe that's the problem. Because all of us, if I bless someone instantly, the universe is always instantaneous, if I truly give love 
through someone to their great glorious self, I will instantly not only keep 60% of what I sent sent out, I can do that pretty much, but a tenfold return is poured into my consciousness and overflowing, pressed down and overflowing. (laughs) And what that means is I will have to give up everything that I've known to receive that level of blessing. I I can tell you are... So you so love what you do. I can. <laughs> it's a fact. It, it is a fact. I, I can I, hear it. You ooze it. I mean, I can hear every word you fill with such passion and such joy, and it it comes through through you. Um, what I find <laughs> phenomenal is that you said every opportunity, uh, everything you were born with, all these, quote, challenges, um, or just amazing opportunities to become your full self. You were born tongue-tied. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what a trip. <laughs> I wish somebody would have told, well, I'm not even sure that's true, but I know that I was literally born tongue-tied. What did I come here to do? Cut tongues free. I was phobic to speak in public. <laughs> I mean, I did now that I see it, but back then I was, you know, my parents are going, we better lose that. And you know, how, and I would rather be talking to you like this. And uh, I don't because, thank God, my tongue got cut free. And if everybody can own their weakness, not run from it, not be embarrassed about it, not try to figure out how to hide it, but own it and find the strength in it, man, our whole world is going to move from this fear of being wrong and trying to be right into love. And then we're going to, you know, like, the wealthy people of the world, the, the primary individual, somebody wrote a book on this, that's all I know, the, that somebody researched all the wealthy, wealthy, wealthy people, and every single one of them, and he names all these people, they were born into abject poverty. Their greatest weakness was their greatest strength. They became the wealthiest. So if everyone, you know, somebody's, let's say, really got a lot of codependent going on in, in 55,000 relationships, <laughs> that person's here for co-empowered relationships. You might as well get to it. If somebody's been battling lack, you're here for, for much bigger supply. If somebody hasn't received honor and respect, you're here to be honored and respected and most likely to be radiantly honor, honoring and respecting of your world. I mean, it's pretty easy. Once we get it, it's like, oh, it's the movement of energy. If, if, Fear, fear is faith inverted. So only love will yeah. unfold that faith in, or that fear into faith and courage and confidence and security, assuredness, trust. So if we can see that, every disease, you know, we've been out here in the past treating symptoms and without looking at what is that the inversion of? Well, you know, how do we touch this in such a way that it blossoms? Instead of kill the disease, kill the sucker. Well, (laughs) how about let's love those tissues back into exactly the opposite. I saw a video on YouTube a while back. I think it was in China. These doctors were treating or examining, looking at secure, see, cure. Uh, this person with cancer, bladder cancer, I believe it was. Yeah, Greg Braden showed that. Yes, yes. It dissolved the tumor just by them holding the vision and well, speaking and they the were word. saying something. They were saying yes. something, and they were doing this chanting. It, it, has begun. it has begun. It has begun. It has begun. Well, what, what I heard Greg said, it was already done. It's already, already done. done. It's already That's done. Right. done. That's right. Loosely translated. And was it like a minute or so many seconds or whatever that this, you know, they had the, <laughs> the original picture of, you know, the, the, um, what were the ultrasound. And then they had a live ultrasound, and they just shrink to nothing, and they go, celebrate, and who's next? And, you know, <laughs> it, all, I mean, that's one of our key phrases, already done. In fact, I trained uh, Greg Braden in his place in Cuesta. I did some outcome facilitation and imagination activation, and, you know, that's where he started on a whole bunch of this path. And it was such a lightning storm. I mean, this guy's got to be one of the most cosmic people on the planet because – Literally, our, all the hair, anybody around, was an extracurricular thing for Solar Heart. Uh, Drumble was there and a number of other folks. But when we, I was just doing this coaching with him about relationship stuff, there was such an electrical storm that every hair, I mean, I, I was not sure we were going to make it out of there with all the electricity going on. It was, <laughs> I mean, so, you know, it was one of those, the whole universe was shifting as he was shifting. So it's quite a, quite a life stream. When someone uses your system or whatever system they use to create a shift, 
be it individually or collectively. And I, I am not implying any form of separation here. Um, when they make that shift, when they change, does the reality, for example, if everyone here was to have a focus um, about what it is, the positive change that we want to see, cure, <laughs> um, does the people actually change or do we go to a level to where that reality of those people have changed exist? I'm going to answer this in a little bit different way uh, because I see things differently. I see that, you know, as we think in our hearts, so are we. So I can just completely, you know, if somebody believes that they, it's going to take them a while, then they have to go through that. There is the possibility that the, the shift that we desire has already happened. Right. I'm going to say it again. The shift that we desire is, in other words, if I'm aware of a new desire, that new desire has already been delivered to me. The, quick, the, the quickness of me having it is me surrendering my old reality and waking up in my new reality as a fact of my world. And the writings of Neville, his real name is Neville Goddard, is something that I encourage all my people I work with to read. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of Kendall books you can get on it. There's all kinds of stuff. I definitely recommend you get fully into his material versus just some of the stuff that's sent out through email because it's it's not enough information so you know get neville n-e-v-i-l-l-e and um along the promise seed time and harvest your faith is your fortune um there's a, a whole bunch pretty much he says the same thing in every book just a different way usually one paragraph is enough to start imagination before sleep and the for me it's you know which the shift is consciousness it doesn't matter where it is and if I believe that I am going to be happy with someone, I'm consenting to not yet being happy and slowing down my happiness. If I can move and go, I am already gloriously happy in me, sharing and radiating my happiness with all in my world, and, and imagine from that new state, my new state, versus toward it, from it. Neville would say, imagine from the wish fulfilled, not of it, toward it, or about it. When I read that for the first time in 87, it was the capstone to everything I'd worked on so far in my life. Mm -hmm. To imagine from our dream fulfilled versus of it, toward it, about it. And I mean, literally, as at that point is when miracle, instantaneous miracles began to happen for me because I would imagine already having them. And imagining from already having them, not imagining what it's like once I figure out how it's going to happen. For me, I would get in the way of manifestation. It's still one of my constant disciplines is if I do, <laughs> chose, I'm serious. I can tell that you chose your word carefully. I saw, I caught, I, I saw it. Uh, yeah, you, you know, <laughs> my little... I, I, you know, if somebody says, oh, man, you're really, you're really, you know, wow. I'm going, look, if you can still see me, I'm working on major stuff. So you can, can you see me? Good. Then you go light yourself up. I'm lighting myself up. Let's do this thing. So anyway, so for me, the, you know, if we're going to have a miracle, it's much easier to imagine from already having the miracle. This is like, you know, I go to prepare a pr place for you. And I, you know, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I believe this is all metaphysics, period. Yeah, spiritual metaphysics, and so, yep. it, and the word Christ in Neville's work means imagination. Not, I, I, I don't agree with everything uh, Neville says, but I believe that the, the Christ consciousness is the power of man, of manifestation through imagination, mm. and the you know the power to create from this you know all things that are manifest in the visible world are manifest from that which is invisible. Well, that means inner visible. So when we see our goal, you know, if I see my goal, I might see myself not yet in my goal. What I'm all about, the system I bring forward, besides having language and, you know, all these other tools, is to, uh, if you see your goal, imagine from, thank you, Neville, already having and enjoying and thriving in your goal and notice what is new and different. In other words, the old self, if I keep my old self alive, my new self doesn't have room. It's the same size cup. You know, nature abhors a vacuum, and, you know, it's like, all right, 
But if I can surrender everything in my known reality, like become present, which means pre-sent, interesting word. <laughs> present is pre-sent. The only thing that can be pre-sent is our creator, which is us. And so if I can go, all right, I, I need a new car. Well, if I can imagine already having my new car and actually imagine driving it, uh, having insurance, you know, maybe going on a trip, whatever, that's much easier than going out looking for my new car. I mean, if every one of us will go already have our dream and imagine from it before we take any quote-unquote actions, our great self will have already uh, manifested our dream and then it's much easier to come into manifestation because we already have it. You know, Robert, I've, I've used that exact analogy many, many times. If you want a new car, go drive the car at the dealership. If you want a Ferrari, go drive it. Feel the exhilaration you have behind the wheel because the car is really not what you want. What you really want is the feeling. Well, and so if you can me, stay in the, the word want, what you want is what right. you desire without having. So that's one of the, that's right, where right. languaging can really play a major role. You know, what you, you know, I want love, you know, the Lord, the law, the I am that I am is my shepherd. I shall not want. Want. Mm. Because mm. want is not, in other words, it's impossible for God to want anything. And God is in us. <laughs> yes. Wow, wow. I'm, I'm trying to take this all in. You know, you mentioned something earlier about getting out of our own way. When I got that, when I had the dream, uh, the holy man came to me uh, in this dream experience, introduced the idea to, to go to India, to come to India and see him and be with him. Um, you know, I, 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 the, the idea was there and I released it. You know, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen. And I got out of my way. And two weeks later, I got this phone call that changed my life literally uh, that phone call changed my life not only to be able to go to india but what transpired through my experience there touching parts of myself when i got to this ashram robert i'm looking at 35 thousand plus people there a day all there for the purpose of unification and love and so the humility i had was the door that allowed me to touch my own divinity and to bring that home with me <laughs> uh, it was such a, a power and it's with me to this day and it is why I do what I do Robert we are approaching the, the end of the show um, let me ask you what is God to you if I may ask you that question love cosmic love every form of love that love and, you know it's just it's in God is love. God is, I mean, I love all the forms of it. I get as cosmic and as practical as anyone. When I was three years old, real quickly, Keith, I woke up as if I'm an adult right now, and I remembered we're going to make it this time. I know love went from, I believe, in, I believe that I've been here before. I mean, I have too many memories to actually think that I haven't. <laughs> and I know that love allowed me to come into, you know, three years old and remember we're going to make it this time. I know love is what builds all this. Love and light are the same thing. So I believe God is love. God is light. Any final message for our listening audience? God is love. God is light. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I have ways you know none of. That's the one, your, your miracle for India. You know, you found, you went over first class in ways that your little self didn't know. So I recommend everyone just say, all right, I have my miracle manifestation. Just open up the miracles, which means higher laws. Mr. Stevens, it was a pleasure to have you on Center of Light Radio, uh, filling us full of light, full of knowledge, and the many tools that you've offered here today. It, it is uh, greatly appreciated, your presence, your precent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning, man. I'm getting there. I'm monitoring myself evermore. Uh, so thank you, Keith, for having me big time. Blessings to you, my dear friend. Uh, that door always swings open to you. Please come back. Yes, sir. Everyone, Mr. Robert Tennyson Stevens, what a phenomenal guest here in the Center of Light Radio. Next week, we're going to have David Matthew Brown, another strong, strongly suggested uh, guest. And I'm always going that, to, that's my vow to you. The guests I'm going to have are going to be that which open doors for you that you can, you know, walk your path and the path of least you know, resistance. We, we tend to, we have um, 
often got in their own way, but now we're going to move smoothly down the road. Uh, Keith Anthony Blanchard here, your host of Center of Light Radio. Make sure you go to centeroflightradio.com. Lots of really cool stuff there. Oh, gosh, what a fantastic show. Now I think I'm going to go have a good time playing some live rock and roll in a club in Memphis tonight. When you lay down at night, you take that breath or many breaths. And you fall into that self, that part of you that lies just behind the breath. Sometimes we overlook it because it's so simple. But when you take that breath and you touch that aspect of yourself, 